Okay. Um, this one, I'm going to, I'm going to try to reword it because I think I understand what it's trying to say, but if I get it wrong, feel free to correct me. Um, I think they're trying to say there are times when, you know, I disagree with my parents or I disagree with my teachers and I disagree with these adults in my life. But when I try to voice that, I'm kind of shut down and told I'm talking back and I'm doing X, Y, Z and I'm being disrespectful. So in those moments where I disagree with these people in authority or in those moments where I know that, that my parents or my teachers are wrong, how do I go about addressing that in a way where they hear it and in a way where I'm not seen as being rude or disrespectful? Wow. I'm, I'm going to give a short answer to that and then I'm going to let others speak to this, but I can tell you what I think. Um, and I've learned this the hard way, uh, but I believe the way to deal with this is timing is everything. Okay, so timing. So in the middle of your parents are an authority figure trying to tell you to do something that they have the authority to tell you to do, that's not the time to negotiate and say, I think, what I, I don't think that's right. I don't think you're right. I wanna do this, but, but I think timing is a critical thing. And what I mean by that, find the right time. And that may not be the time when they're asking you to do something. What I will say is this, Every one of those people in your life, they're there for a reason. And they have a part in your life, you have a part. And I think as a young adult, as you are now a young person, go to them and say, um, away from the situation, away from the circumstance, and not blaming them for anything, but saying, can I talk to you? Try this approach. Now, it may be different for whoever you're talking to, maybe a parent or a teacher, a boss, a pastor, but say this can I talk to you about something? And depending on how they answer, yes, you can. This is what my approach would be. Um, I feel, I feel, this is how I feel, and I'm saying it's you, but how I feel when you say A, B, or C, it really makes me feel this way. I really think this way. And I, 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 I had to share this with you because um, I'm, I've been holding on the inside. It makes me angry. It makes me upset. And I don't want to be disobedient. I don't want to be disrespectful. But I had to tell you that when you say this, when you do this, when you act this way, when you talk to me this way, this is how it makes me feel. And I want to be honest with you about that. Now, you may not say it in those exact words, but I do believe timing is important. And I do believe um, how you say it, not blaming them for anything, is more about how you feel is what's going to be important to those people. They may not necessarily hear it, but you did your part. And that's the part that's important. And I think that's uh, um, a critical thing to take on and, and hear. Anybody else want to speak to that? Go ahead. Yeah, I got, I got uh, man, this one, this one weighs heavy on me because I struggled. I still struggle with this one sometimes, but um, what I would say to that is definitely take into consideration what Pastor Lee said, because that's huge. Like if, if you were asked to go to your friend's house right now, cause you finished your homework and your mom says, no, that's not the time to reason with her about why you should be able to go to your friend's house. It's just um, kind of underhanding their authority. And with that said, I personally struggle with this because now that I'm grown, I feel like a lot of times this goes back to what I was saying, how I, it's hard for me to see other people's perspective. A lot of times I think I know what's best for me. And in, in saying that, you have to realize that it's a part of life there's a hierarchy in all aspects, just like some people were forced to close down their business in the shutdown right now, and they might not agree with that, but they still have to answer to their parents, so to speak, which at this point is the government. Um, but in disagreeing with something that your teacher says or your parents say, it's fine and okay, and there's a fine line between like standing up for yourself and then also having to sometimes follow the rules and what i say that what i mean is um 
look at the consequences for possibly doing what you want anyways or not following the rules. So for instance, if you're living at home still and your parents provide food for you, shelter, clothes, and all that livelihood, then, I, and I've had certain students say things like this to me, like, oh, I'm getting older, I should have some freedom. Even though I might agree with them and what they're asking for isn't out of this world, these are your parents' rules, and as long as you live under their house, you have to respect those rules. And it goes back to that patience, I promise you, it's not going to be forever. You're going to be 18 soon enough when you can move out and do what you want to do and live how you want to live. But as long as they are providing for you, you have to respect them. And that's the same thing with school. There's a lot of things that our teachers might ask of us, this, that, and the third. But you have to look at the consequence. The alternative is you don't listen, but what's the consequences? And sometimes that's just the way that it is. Um, I don't know if that came out exactly how I wanted to say, but um, I guess that's what I got on that. <laughs> Let me give you a point, good. One practical thing to that. Maybe you can't speak it, but I also believe putting it on paper, if you can write a letter to a parent and a uh, card and just saying, I love you, I thank you, you've always been good to me, there's something I want to share with you, you can put it on paper. It also helps sometimes to uh say it on you know in writing than trying to talk because sometimes people can't talk without getting frustrated and just like they you know blowing up like you know what forget it no but maybe just spending some quality time writing and and honorably speaking on paper and respectfully speaking can also be a way to uh touch the hearts of the people that you're bumping heads with one thing to remember as long as you live as long i don't care what season of life you're in as a parent, as, a, as an adult, single teenager, a boss, an employee, you're always going to be under the authority of somebody. There's always going to be somebody telling you what to do, and you're not going to always like it. And that's life. We are all, even if you go on your own, you're going to have somebody telling you what to do. Somebody's going to tell you, you got to pay your, you got to pay your light bill, you got to buy this food, you know, you got to, you got to cut your grass. Uh, and when, if you're a man, you think you're not going to have anybody telling you what to do, you get married, it's over for the rest of your life. <laughs> she, talks, she runs the thing. So ladies, let's understand that. You run this world. Be, uh, be <laughs> that. She said it, but she ain't the first one to say it. You, you run this thing and know that. And there's always going to be somebody. And, and mothers, when you, know, when you become a mother, your children end up running your life. So it's just interesting. There's always going to be somebody in authority over you. So learn how to submit to authority. That's the first thing, because it'll help you in every area of your life. I got something on this. Add, oh, oh, go ahead. Go, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna talk about being an eight, like an 18 year old with a strict parent. So I get that side of things. Go ahead. So I would just add, um, take it, take a couple minutes away from the situation too. I think sometimes, I mean, I know this is the case with me because I love language and I love words so much that like, I'll, I'll, I'll want to do something and someone will be like, no, you can't do that. And I want the perfect comeback. I want to be the one who shuts down the conversation immediately, like proves, nope, this is the right thing to do. And I'm going to show you right now. But I think having that immediate comeback out of frustration and anger, all that does is build up the tension in the situation. I think it's important to kind of take that step back and go, okay, first of all, how important is this really? on a larger scale. In Elias's example, I asked to go to my friend's house. My mom said no, but I know that next week she's going to say yes. So like, is that really something I want to get into a fight about right now? And if it is, then to take that moment and go, okay, take out the anger and frustration and at the core of the problem, what's the actual issue that I want to address? So I'm not just speaking out of anger. I'm not just speaking out of frustration. I'm saying, hey, I am angry and frustrated but it's because of this, and this is the part that I actually want to address with you. Awesome. Steph, you don't? Oh, go next, okay. Um, so I just wanted to say, and this is something I had to learn, is we get into a place where we get so concerned about the justice of things, where we, we think about, it's not even about 
right or wrong. It's about justice. It's like, I want, I, and the, the problem with that and why human beings have a difficulty, which is why there's nine Supreme Court justices, right? Because we don't, we have such a difficulty um, addressing things from a, like, cause we always think that our moral center is right. So when you're approaching things from a perspective of I need justice, I'm, I'm right and you're wrong. You're assuming a lot of things. You're assuming that your point of view, your platform is the exact right thing. And there is no other variation. Everything is black and white. When you jump into a situation of a yes or no situation, and then you go, Oh, well that's wrong. And let me tell you why, because I think, right. We're coming from a place where we want justice. We want what's right. And of course, what I believe is right. All the rest of you are crazy. If you disagree, you're not, you're, I mean, the world we live in right now, the word partisan, every single one of you knows what it is. And I wish you didn't only because we, that's how our world is run is if you right now, if you wear a mask, you're a, you're, you're a Democrat. If you refuse to wear a mask, you're a Republican. That is not true, but that's, what's being painted, right? It's, they, we draw such a definitive line of what's right and what's wrong. And if you're on this side, then you're on the, if you're not on this side, then you're on the other side. I'll give a, I'll give an example of what, there's just so many more layers. And if you can understand that when you come into any situation, especially with an authority figure, that there is so much more going on than you probably know, but I'll, I'll give a very, very tame example from my life. Um, so my oldest son, Eli, some of you guys know Elijah, he loves to take showers like all day. Um, I don't know why he'll come in and be like, dad, I just played outside. I take a shower. I'm like, you were on the porch, man. Like we have a, I'm on the porch right now. It's roof. Yeah. Like, bro, you don't need a shower. Um, so one time I said, no, you can't take a shower. And he started to throw a fit and do the whole thing. That's not fair. You don't even care. You, you don't, you blah, 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 blah. So I started it again because I'm coming from a place of knowing the reasoning and being the one that makes the decision as the authority figure. I come from a place of like, I'm the only one who cares, actually. Uh, no, nobody else in this world cares about you like I do. I didn't do that though. That's what I wanted to say. What I said was, I, I turned to him and he was old enough to get this. And I said, do you know why I said no? And he said, no, I just think it's, I just don't think you want me to have what I want. And I said, son, we are running the dishwasher, the washing machine, and your sister just took a bath 20 minutes ago. How much hot water do you think we got? Like, if I let you go take a shower right now, it's going to be cold. And it's not going to be good for you. So while I was telling him no, he heard injustice. I need to righteousness. I need retribution. But what he didn't understand was it was so much better for me to say no than it was for, and, and in saying no, I was protecting him from an experience that would have been unpleasant. So a lot of the times, and you're not gonna be able as a parent to have that 10 minute conversation every single time you say no. Sometimes just no has gotta be no. But just understand that when you have an authority figure, Pastor Lee hit it on the head, you're always gonna have a boss. And your boss is gonna make a decision that you don't agree with at least five times a week, or that you think you don't agree with. But you got to realize that you're not in every conversation. You're not the moral center of the world, right? Justice is what it is, but you can't be the one who everything that you think is right. And you, know, you got to be willing to accept the fact that there's things you don't know and that people are, especially your, the people in your life, I hope they've got what's best for you in mind. So I was just going to add that my parents were extremely like put it all in caps, extremely strict growing up. Um, I could not, I was like 16 and could barely drive around the block without telling them that I, that's where I was going, like extremely strict. And um, so I did the whole thing from 16 on of, I cannot wait till I turn 18. Peace out, Girl Scout. I'm out of here. I'm getting my own apartment. Blah. Bye, Felicia. I'm done. And so I did. <laughs> So I moved out when I was 18 and was like, bye, you know, don't miss this. I can do whatever I want. I don't have any rules. I pay the bills, blah, 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 the whole thing. And I will say now looking back that those rules and things were there as a guideline. And someone once um, used this illustration 
And that is, and I know I've, I've shared it with at least one of you before, but um, when you're driving down the highway and you are even down a road, and it might be two lanes, it might be four lanes, those guardrails are there for a reason. And your parents are like guardrails. And they're there because if you hit that, it's, you're going to bounce back. But eventually, especially when you get on your own, and you, you, those guardrails go away. And when you go, go off the road and those guardrails aren't there, the consequences are even higher. And those stakes are even higher because you could go off into a ravine. You could, you know, your car could flip. There's so many things that could happen. So in the time... As, as hard as it hurts to have those guardrails for your car, your car's still gonna have some damage, right? It's still gonna maybe have some bumps and bruises and not look the greatest. Be thankful for those guardrails because those guardrails are there for your best interest, even though you might think, no, they're just here to make my life miserable and to not allow me to go the highest speed I wanna go or whatever it might be. Those guardrails are there because they love you and because they do want to see you succeed and to do well. And I will tell you now as in my thirties, having a good relationship with my parents, um, that like God ha has used even those times for both of us to grow and learn. And so God's not done with your parents yet either. He's, you are, iron sharpens iron. And sometimes there might be things that God is even using you. So as you say, I feel, don't be, um, don't put walls up when they say, well, it's making me feel like this and be able to have a conversation. Cause that's really a sign of maturity and that you're growing and you're trying to be, uh, you know, being able to handle. Cause in jobs and in real life, you have to have conflict. And, and part of having a relationship with your parents is learning that conflict resolution and how to have an adult conversation with them of this is frustrating me. And this is also them saying, well, your attitude is frustrating me or you not doing this is frustrating me. And just like so many of you have said, we're always having authorities, even at jobs, even when I moved out and I had to pay all the bills myself, toilet paper costs money, people, I'm just saying. <laughs> and uh, so it costs money. So everything costs, and I had to answer to way more people than just answering to my parents who were providing a ton for me. That's all. No, that was, that was good, Stephanie. 